This video is brought to you by Captivating History. It is said that after Baldur's death, Odin felt the doom of the gods drawing near. But the time of the gods is not the time of mortals, and it seems that the Norse lived for many centuries in the gap of time between Baldur's death and the day of doom. Baldur's death was told as a thing finished and much more, while Ragnarok was yet to come. Still, the shape of the end was already known, for Odin had heard it foretold by a prophetess. The first sign of the end of the world of men would be terrible storms and midsummer days growing short as in winter. After the disordering of nature would come the disordering of men. There would be terrible wars, not that the world had ever been warless, but the fighting would grow crueler and more unceasing, and there would be an end of loyalty and courage. Men and women would no longer keep any of the oaths they swore of love or of fealty or of alliance. Incest and treachery would become commonplace. Then, the summer heat would fail entirely. Three winters would come in succession with no planting time between. Men would look to the heavens and despair of the cold and pallor of the sun, and at the earth and despair of the hunger in their bellies and the hate in the eyes of their fellow men. The prophetess called it a wind time, a wolf time, before the world falls. Then the great world tree itself would shake, and all the heavens and the earths that hung from it would tremble, and all bonds be broken. The wolves who have chased the sun and moon across the heavens since the beginning of time would overtake their prey at last in that convulsion and the earth would be thrown into darkness. Loki would break free from his irons and flee to Jotunheim to join the giants in their battle against the gods. The cold sea would swell to a great height and an icy wave roll toward Asgard. On the crest of that wave would ride the great ship Negalfar, made from the fingernails and toenails of dead mortals. Loki and the giant Rimnir would stand together at the prow of that ship laughing to see destruction coming on the gods, and the ship would be filled with a great host of giants. But the giants were not the only foes with whom the gods had to reckon. Loki's wolf son, Fenrir, whose binding was accomplished at the cost of Tyr's hand, would also break free and open his jaws, reaching from the earth below to the heavens above. The Midgard serpent, Loki's other son, would rise thrashing from the depths of the sea and loom over Asgard. And behind them all would come the glittering army of Muspelheim, the world of fire, casting a terrible light over the darkened lands. The gods knew that they would not win that battle, but also that they would not shrink from it. Their host would go out for the last battle, hopeless but also fearless. Odin would lead the charge against Fenrir and be swallowed for his pains. The Odin's son, Vidar, would kill the wolf and avenge his father. Thor would throttle his old enemy, the Midgard Serpent, before dying of the poison that spit over him. Tyr would lose his remaining hand and his life contending with another wolf, though it would die with him. Loki and the god Heimdall would also fall fighting each other. And then, as the armies of gods and monsters reeled from their terrible losses, the fire giants would arrive from Muspelheim. Frey, the sea god's son, would stand against Surt, the leader of the hosts of fire. But he would stand weaponless, having given his wonder sword to Skirnir, and he would fall. Then Surt would fling out fires hotter than the eruption of any volcano in Midgard, consuming everything they touched. The world would end as it began in fire. But that ending would lead to another beginning. As Asgard and Midgard had been formed in the void between ice and fire, so as Surt's fire sank into the icy sea, a new world would rise like an island in the empty waves, a green land and fair. The woman, who was the son, would have given birth to a daughter before her death, and in the new world that daughter would rise radiant. Her light would flash on the waterfalls of the young world and give sight to its eagles and bring forth flowers and fruit from the earth with no human needed to tend them. In that new world, all evil would be dead and forgotten. 
Baldr would come again to rule that young world, and his brother Hodor with him, and no bitterness in the heart of either brother for the manner of their deaths before. Perhaps others of the gods would return as well, and mortal humans also would return. In a secret place far from the wars of gods and monsters, Leif and Leifthersir would be hidden through the days of destruction and brought into the new green world to fill it with a people who would know that joy and peace which had seldom appeared in Asgard and Midgard before. And for those who had died in Midgard before the Day of Doom, another resurrection awaited. There would be a new heaven as well as a new earth, and in the gold roof hall called Gimli, those who had been just or pure of heart or good as the teller defined goodness would live in bliss forever. Some stories said that there would also be colder and fouler places for those who had been murderers, oathbreakers, or adulterers. Others said that place of punishment was part of the old world that would die with Odin and Loki and the giants. When Snorri Sturluson told this tale, he spoke as though the bliss of this new world would be unending. In the older poem of the prophecy given to Odin, the prophetess's last words spoke of a dragon rising with its mouth full of corpses. Some translators say this must be a mistake, a bit of the earlier story of struggle dropped in the wrong place. Perhaps it is so. Perhaps it is foolish to expect any clear understanding of the end of the world and of what follows after the end. If you want to learn more about Norse mythology, then check out our book, Norse Mythology, a captivating guide to Norse folklore, including fairy tales, legends, sagas, and myths of Norse gods and heroes. Also, if you haven't already gotten your free mythology ebook bundle, grab it while it's still free. All links are in the description. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you want us to create more videos like this.